Well, thank you so much for giving us your time today. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, would you mind introducing yourself, first of all, to us? Who are you? Well, my name is Wim Delvoye, and uh, I let people say Delvoye as well. Um, I'm an artist since, since uh, school, art school. So and, uh, I've done uh, all kind of things. Sometimes it's closer to architecture or sometimes it's closer to the medical. Um, so I kind of don't have a particular style. In retrospect, I think it's a bit like a group exhibition. If I do a monographic show somewhere, it looks like a group show. So I've done a lot of stuff, but including, and that's where, where you guys come in, uh, including uh, tattooing, lots of work with tattoo on human and also on pigs. Exactly. We're especially interested in um, Tim Steiner yeah. and also your relationship with him. So can you tell us about this artwork? What is this all about? How it came into being? Um, when, I, uh, when I was a student, I was fascinated by uh, the generation of the teachers who were uh, conceptual artists. I was very interested in... Uh, cerebral um, art and uh, the reflection on how art is distributed or how art is, um, has a social role in society or how art functions as a tool of power. Or I was very intrigued by that and uh, I developed in my work uh, these questions further but in a very visual way. These people were usually very textual based minimalist type of uh, actions and uh, they were very this generation was also very fascinated by um, bringing art into a gas state i always say like uh, if um, pre-modern art uh, is solid then uh, modern art and contemporary art is like liquid uh, hard to tell fluid, fast. Um, so from conceptual art on you have uh, uh, also art who is much more in a gas state. And uh, I love to do actions that are not necessarily tradable or who are contradicting tradable. So to go back to the tattoo works, I was very interested in making something permanent on something that is not permanent. That also explains why there's so many skulls in tattoo. Somehow unconsciously, the proletarian tattoo um, um, or the criminal tattoo, there are lots of skulls in it, but it's perfect because there's something really morbid about tattoo. And it would only be art when this person or this animal dies, because then it's fixated, it's a still image, it's uh, getting a solid state. So I was really interested in making the circle and making something that could in time uh, make, become art or get that, that title. Um, but that is hard to tell. It would be, for example, still a tattooed pig, or it would be on a person, and you also don't have complete control. Maybe this person lives longer, or in the case of pigs, for example, maybe they die young and they have an influence. You, you cannot completely control the work. So I like to start a scenario and and not having the whole scenario in my hands. It's also about human interaction. For example, when I went to China, I had to get um, tattoo artists uh, and veterinarian doctors, lots of stuff to set up uh, this project on a larger scale. I did already uh, tattooing 
on that height, freshly slaughtered uh, things I got from Slaughterhouse, 94, 95, I started to experiment. But I didn't take it so seriously. But I was also fascinated by the iconography of tattooing. The iconography of tattooing um, is kind of like, if people are willing to have this on their body, that, that counts, that must be interesting. What, what is their iconography? Because the art world is also a bubble. And in the world of images, it takes a very small uh, place um, in, in the rest of it. And the art world keeps saying, yeah, but we are art. Why there is uh, a, plur uh, a plethora, how do you say it, plethora? Uh, of uh, images that is not considered art, but is shared by so many people. Like I see in tattoo, in tattoo iconography, there is a subtle ambition to be different from each other, but it still needs to follow certain very strong cliches that even if you just draw it, people would say, oh, that's a tattoo. So it has its own style. And then within there are like different styles. From uh, electric tattoo machine on, uh, you, have, you had an amazing uh, evolution in styles. Always super um, uh, interested in uh, doing things that are technically how did he do it? Even when it doesn't look like this, try and it's, it looks easy, but sometimes it looks natural. It looks like a carved tire. It's natural, yeah, carving in a tire. That's what hooligans do. Um, uh, or, or bad youngsters with a knife, you know? And so once you see it, it becomes like, oh, yeah, why not? Same for the pigs, it's like, it's the same skin, uh, we're quite alike. Um, the smart, the kind of, um, they can be very mean as well to each other then. And um, it's also about setting up a community and visiting communities, like the tattoo world was also a little, before I started the project, alien to me. So it was a bit of a tourism. I had to socialize with people who get in trouble with the law, or people who are, um, yeah, um, living differently, to, to put it politely, you know, uh, different type of people. But somehow I also see, oh, but this guy's talented. In another world, he would have me maybe be like me. And so I start to associate and jokingly, I always say, if ever I get in jail, I will have a job now. It's an insurance and life. If I get in another milieu and I need to survive in that new milieu, um, my skill, because I, yeah, I always, uh, to get the, the, the trust of my tattoo, tattooists, I had to tattoo along. And then the press came and then uh, they asked me to tattoo, so I became better and better. In square meters, I, I can uh, probably compete with a lot of famous tattoo artists. I mean, they did much more. Uh, I never really, uh, my ambition was not really making different image, imagery for tattoo. I never had that ambition. So I never tried to be special or to be, basically it's a reflection or a consensus of all the tattoos together, the things I did. I, I also photographed lots of tattoos in the street when it's nice weather. Big chance. Um, but when I started, tattoo was maybe only starting to be gentrified or a little bit more mainstream, as they would say. It became a bit more like um, uh, the daughter of the do local doctor uh, probably also, also started to have a tattoo. Uh, but it was because they could make nice butterflies on heels or on safe places, um, but the stigma was starting to 
maybe that's also why I stopped. There wasn't any stigma anymore. But originally I was really interested in the class aspects also from the project, like um, uh, the project, the class aspects. Um, art is uh, expensive and is bought by very wealthy people um, with nice cars and um, and then um, the generally speaking tattoo was like for people with not such nice cars and uh, if they already had a car and um, they were like a bit more there was a lot of stigma I, I like to play with because um, there's something criminal or there's this is associated by criminal even Adolf Loos from um, the one one architect theorist from the early uh, modernism in architecture he made he wrote a, a pamphlet and he in that his famous pamphlet um, um, ornament uh, und verbrechen yeah he didn't say he's often quoted as saying ornament is verbrechen ornament is a crime it's not what he wrote his, in his book. The title is Ornament and Crime. But basically, yeah, that's what he said. He compared uh, the, the ornaments from the, these armchairs uh, with, with, the criminal, with, the, with the tattooed criminal. Or he said even something that you wouldn't say anymore, the primitive. So uh, his, his pamphlet is now not anymore... Uh, is becoming dated in our woke times. Uh, there, are, there are a couple of things in, the, in his pamphlet that might shock you now. Um, um, but uh, I was kind of interested in that, that, uh, that, I, that idea that uh, ornament is a crime, but you could do the crime. You know, so I started to carve on concrete mixers that uh, are unnecessarily ornamented. There's a lot of labor put in it, but yeah, it's a tool of labor, so it's like twice labor. And it's it's funny because these tools would never be, never deserve to be on, ornate. Um, um, so it was like I was uh, doing uh, ornaments as a crime. It looked really criminal on a concrete mixer. So uh, automatically that led me to tattoo. And there was already a little bit uh, class consciousness in my inter when I was interested in uh, ornament, let's say, Early 90s, I carved concrete mixes in Indonesia. And um, uh, that was early. Now you, it looks normal. It looks like from a young artist, but that was early. And I had it carved in Indonesia. That's also interesting that you have this cool idea about offshoring and um, what do you call it? Uh, outsourcing, sorry, outsourcing. and. It was like a globalism that was new to me. This type of poor people aesthetics uh, was, was interesting for me. Like, they made so many, they can't be wrong. <laughs> yeah? They can be wrong because they with so many. So I was always interested in something that was already successful. Like a crucifix is very successful. Uh, the chance you will find it in the sea in 5,000 5, years is enormous. Or in the earth. Um, if nobody will know about our civilization, they would, they would probably think that um, we looked like crucified. Uh, if that is the only images they will find in the ground one day, it's a big chance it's uh, Jesus, more than Mickey Mouse. Maybe Mickey Mouse, but it's done in plastic, so it will disappear. 
So anyway, I like uh, these cliches who survive, and they in tattoo, it's perfect. They are so 19th century, heavy symbolism, uh, loaded up, uh, uh, kind of obvious uh, symbols. Yeah, a heart means love. Yeah, the Yeah, of course, okay. But, I mean, you couldn't do that in, in the art world. But I had to filter it. I had to have also uh, a certain filter uh, or a certain... I managed to bring these images in the context of the contemporary art world without being responsible for the meaning of each image. There was a promiscuity in the image. Um, like a tattooist would have. Let's say a tattooist, you come in and you ask, uh, oh, I want uh, Adolf Hitler and uh, swastika. <laughs> no problem. I mean, there is an enormous unrestrictiveness in it. But uh, as I would do it on a pig or somebody else, the, the tattooist uh, would, uh, would be not responsible. Uh, it's interesting to have an actor in your place, which could be a human being. But in most cases, it was a pig. So I thought I could even make a pig, a right-wing pig and a left-wing pig. So there was a certain uh, liberty. Uh, and I, then I started to expressly co uh, make compositions that they contradict each other. If you would, would look the left side, huh, it looks like this pig is thinking uh, right wing, and then you look, oh no, 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 he likes Chikivara, which is, for example, a popular tattoo. Lots of Chikivaras on the tattoos. Even by people who have no idea who this man is. He's very good looking, by the way. So he could be uh, a drunk seaman, would say, oh, uh, that guy, what's his name again? He would, he would do it. It's, it's, a, it's not in the top ten, but it's a good tattoo. Can you tell us about the process of meeting him, but also of setting up the contract that you have with him? What type of contract is it? Well, it's harder than a pick because Tim has also opinions. And uh, there's negotiations. And I had an, a first sketch and I wanted like a name, uh, a name of a girl. But of course, yeah, I cannot just put Christine on, on, uh, on Tim. But, oh, oh, yeah. I'm so used to the pics that I never thought of him, of him that he has no... No, he said, my, my girlfriend is Stephanie. I said, oh, that's fine. Let's do Stephanie. I'm already adapting myself that Tim is not a pic, right? And um, uh, now he says, don't do Stephanie. Uh, I don't want anybody's name. I said, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, me, myself, I also wouldn't like to fix somebody's name on me, on my body, and certainly, certainly not on his age. He was one of the exhibits. Let's do it just for the opening. And then Tim came in and they thought he was so charming. They all decided he's a successful uh, exhibit. He's also very exhibi exhibitionist. For years I looked for a guy who, uh, like, like I found in Tim, What obligations does he have towards you? What are the conditions of this contract? Uh, it's actually only a sales contract. And the whole focus during the work on the contract, it took like months, because it was sold in Zurich and uh, it was... Um, um, somehow there were German lawyers involved. Why was that? It was... It was basically sold in Germ to a German. It was sold to a German, that's it, Rick Reinking. But, it, you know, if you have different lawyers in Zurich and in Berlin, yeah, they stretch it, they become expensive. So that in itself became like uh, the artwork, in a way. Because how can you sell a human being? 
sounds like uh, slavery from Egyptian time or something, or uh, Roman time. Uh, um, how can you sell? Oh, you can sell organs. Of course not. That's in the newspapers often. Everybody knows you cannot just sell human organs, which makes sense. Um, and trafficking them, that would be also something, because there's also the idea of trafficking. Uh, Tim is a uh, salt ho, salt, <laughs> uh, to Germany. <laughs> he's a Swiss. <laughs> oh, he's Swiss. Yeah, he's he's Swiss. from Zurich, yeah. yeah. He's like in a very rich town. Uh, his family name is Steiner. A very good name. Um, it's completely uh, not... Uh, like like a criminal person, he's a musician. Okay, he's a bit wild, yeah, but pop musicians need to be, or what do you call them, uh, musicians need to still be a bit, yeah, they have their own uh, image to defend, yeah. Um, so he was already tattooed, so I also didn't feel guilty, like I didn't convince anyone. He had a pretty ugly tattoo here. Uh, we call it an old school tattoo, but it was like too big for its image. With a good machine, you have this done that big. But it's like a, a naked woman with a martini glass, you know, this 1950s uh, um, thing. But it's in a simple line with very little uh, color. No, no, it's very much color. But like a bit, you know, Hanna Barbara Flintstones, a bit this, but from let's say more tattoo-like, and yeah, I would never tattoo it that big. Yeah, in the early days I did. I, basically, you know, tattooists should be obliged to do what I did, because isn't that a shame that their first tattoo is already on a human being? A lot of people make such a fuss at tattooed pics, although I always had them asleep. But think of uh, the tattooists. I mean, for an architect, you have to study for a long time and then have a license to be an architect. Why you don't need a li license to be, to, to be putting images on a human body? That's amazing. I would also protect humans, not just buildings. And the safe, okay, the, the architecture laws that you have to have a license is maybe also safety of the human being, okay, yeah, that, that may be also a bit, but it's so weird that there's no attention done on the fact that these people basically get getting experience with the first client, the second client. They know artists, really. They're like more hairdressers. I call them hairdressers. And some of them have a, a, a bit of a drawing skill. But it's actually uh, sometimes not in your favor to have a drawing skill, because if you draw well, you draw quickly. Yeah, because that's what you're used to. And all of a sudden, you need to learn to do needlework. Because tattooing, the machine doesn't do uh, a line. You cannot say, okay, now I do a line. No, a line is a collection of dots, one next to the other. Otherwise, you just make a terrible wound and no ink in it. Uh, you would be a terrible tattooist. Uh, and imagine also coloring is also just like needling. I call it like, for a macho man, it's like needling. It's like they, they're not aware that they're basically the same as these nun-like uh, women who do uh, little stitch things, you know. Uh, but it's the same patience, it's the same uh, attention, detail, and basically the same movement with, with, uh, with the hands. It's uh, very difficult if you already know uh, to make images on a piece of paper and you're already so, it's in your hands. Sometimes you could forget. You could be so entranced that you want to do your drawing. Oh no, in the beginning you need to learn this is going to take time, even if you know it's a simple drawing. Yeah, yeah, for you it's a simple drawing, but for the person, he needs to have it in little, little uh, things. And yeah, to tell you the truth, most people love it and get addicted to it because it releases serotonin, 
and you have people who, who can't stop anymore. 